Welcome! It's time for another Hero Junior video. If you've been watching my series, you've seen I've done several videos on taking this old Hero Junior that came with no electronics and replacing it with modern electronics. This week I'm not going to replace it with something modern, I'm going to replace it with something old again. And that is to go in here and add in the original Votrax SCO1A speech synthesizer. Uh, so because I got this robot with no electronics, it came with no speech chip, so I had to acquire a speech chip from elsewhere. I wanted the robot to sound just like the original, so I have designed an I2C Votrax board that I will hook up to a Raspberry Pi and be able to have the Raspberry Pi speak through the Votrax SC01A speech synthesizer. Okay, let's go over the design for the speech synthesizer board that I came up with. So it's just, I've divided the schematic into several sections. Over here we have the microcontroller, then we have the speech circuitry, we have a power supply, and here we have an RS-232. So let's start with the microcontroller. Let me take and zoom in a little bit. You can see it's a, I used a standard Atmega AT328 microcontroller. And uh, I used it because I use the Atmega 328 for a lot of my projects. It's a good microcontroller. It's, I'm familiar with it, and it's got plenty of I.O. lines. Only a few necessary components that go along with it. So, for example, I added this AREF capacitor that's called for. Um, there are some bypass capacitors. I think I've got them sitting up here. Um, and then I added a couple of connectors. So this connector here is the in-circuit programming connector, just standard um, Arduino-type pinout. And then I also added a connector here for the I2C. This will allow me to control the speech synthesizer via I2C if I want to. This pinout is just something I use in my other projects, this particular header. We have five volts to drive the microcontroller to power it, ground, and then the SCL and SDA lines. Now, out of the microcontroller, where there's a whole bunch of pins that go to various functions, and you can see six of them, uh, PD2 through PD7, come out here and run into the phoneme inputs in the speech synthesizer. I did add a pull-up resistor here. This turned out not to be necessary. You can ignore it. It's just an unpopulated footprint on the board. Those inputs are fine, you can just drive them with logic level. Now more interesting is the inflection inputs, this I1 and I2. Those are not logic level inputs on the Votrax. Those are actually a relatively high level. The data sheet calls out for it to be 0.8 times the uh, power that's going into it. So 0.8 times 12 volts is what, like around uh, 9.6 volts or so? That would, that would be really high for a high input. You obviously can't drive that from the microcontroller. So you come down here and use some transistor drivers. I got these transistor drivers off of the Heath Kit schematic for their speech board. And this doesn't quite yield 0.8 times the uh, 12 volts. This only yields about 7 volts, so it's technically a little bit out of spec. But it worked for Heathkit, so I figured, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. So then we've got a, a simple uh, NPN transistor, pulls this down or lets it float up to that voltage divider level. Now, on my first iteration of the board, I actually didn't know about these higher levels, and I didn't have these drivers. And I had these inflection inputs uh, connected straight across, and that actually worked. I was kind of surprised when I read the data sheet and found out that's not supposed to work, but it actually did. So, I mean, you may be able to cheat and just run these straight across and not use the transistor drivers, but you'd certainly be working outside of what the data sheet calls for. And then we also have a strobe signal. That's what you um, trigger in order to get it to accept a new phoneme. And then we've got some feedback. We have this um, ACK or uh, request feedback. And I put that through a resistor here going into the microcontroller. I put the resistor there just as protection. Um, avoid either damaging the chip or damaging the microcontroller if something goes wrong. Um, you might be able to wire that straight across, but it works fine with resistor too. Now the other inputs we have going into the speech synthesizer, you have this uh, resistor capacitor network here that drives the frequency. And this, I think, is also straight out of the Heathkit datasheet. It's just a potentiometer, a resistor, and a capacitor. And this will cause um, oscillation here at a certain frequency. I think it calls for it to be 720 kilohertz. So you set your pot until you read the right uh, frequency on your scope on this line. And that 
You can also use that to change the, um, the pitch up or down a little bit if you want. Now then coming out of the Votrax, we have two lines here for the audio signal as well as this CB line is for driving an amplifier directly. We don't need CB because we'll use a separate amplifier. So the audio output comes out here. It goes through a little bit of a capacitor resistor network and down here into a sort of a preamp volume control. So this is um, allowing you to adjust the volume of what comes out of the synthesizer itself. So there's some other components here that are not populated or shorted across. Those were actually out of one of my other speech synthesizer projects and I figured, well, I'll just leave them in here and they could be an option for some kind of additional output filter if I wanted to, but don't really need them, so don't worry about them. Now for my amplifier, I ended up using a TP2016 amplifier board from Adafruit. And the reason I chose that over a more conventional amplifier was because it has I squared C control. So you can see an SCL and an SDA line come in and the microcontroller can send signals over those lines to set the volume and other parameters of the amplification. This would allow us to implement software volume control. So I thought that seemed kind of neat. There's also a shutdown line here that would allow you to turn the amplifier on and off from the microcontroller and you can see I plumbed that through over to here. Now one of my thoughts was to also make this into like a uh, type and talk type thing. So the type and talk was something a Votrax made and it had an RS-232 port and you could hook it up to your computer and you could speak through the RS-232. And it used, you know, the typical of the time, the big 25 pin RS-232 connector. So I figured I would do that. I wired in the um, RTS, CTS, uh, receive and transmit to the uh, Atmega and hook them up to a MAX-232 driver, along with the various capacitors that go with that driver that's straight out of the data sheet. Header here that would let you do a, a null modem built in if you wanted to. Just normally put the, the jumper straight across. And then it comes out here to the connector. I also used um, a six pin header for uh, an FTDI board in case you wanted to omit this and go direct into uh, USB. Now the next interesting thing is about the voltage. So when I was designing my robot, I planned for the entire head to be five volt power because I figured it's just a bunch of sensors, Raspberry Pi, stuff like that. No motors, no need for 12 volt. But then if you look at the data sheet for the Votrax, you find out it needs more than five volts. I think it calls for a minimum of like seven or nine volts or something like that. Um, so anyway, the five volts that I planned my whole robot architecture around, in, for at least for the head part of the robot, was not going to work out. It needed 12 volt. So I went ahead and I cheated and I put in a boost um, converter from Polalu. Polalu makes some nice little boost converters. They're three pins. You put the voltage in one side and out comes your boosted voltage. So I used a 5 volt to 12 volt boost converter. They recommended putting some capacitors around it, so I did put some uh, 33 microfarad capacitors. Then I also put some other filtering capacitors just because we want nice filtered uh, voltage. Wired a jack into it just in case you didn't want to deal with this uh, boost converter, you could just power it off 12 volt jack. I also put some fuses in, you know, when you're dealing with our vintage rare, super rare chip, it's nice to have fuses in case anything goes wrong. So there's fuses on both the five volt supply and the 12 volt supply, as well as some TVS diodes. TVS diode is kind of like a super duper Zener diode. Um, should you exceed uh, the rating of the TVS diode, it'll short it to ground, probably quickly blow the fuse, but that's just an additional protection. It's both a 5 volt TVS diode and a 12 volt TVS diode. Now I wanted to mention a problem that I had. The very first prototype I made of this, when I soldered it up, hooked it up to my Raspberry Pi, um, it did not produce any speech. Worse than that, it consumed more power than it was supposed to. It consumed um, hundreds of milliamps instead of the tens of milliamps the data sheet calls for and it started to get hot the speech chip actually started to get hot so when you're dealing with a super rare vintage speech chip the last thing you want is for it to start getting hot and uh, consume excessive power so i usually uh, you know i power up my projects with a benchtop supply that's current limited just for that reason and you know maybe it saved me here but unfortunately, I didn't get a conclusive answer as to how I fixed the problem. I mean, obviously, um, you'll see in a minute the demo that I did fix it. And I was up late at night. I changed a few things around and eventually it started working. So I'm going to mention the three things that I fixed that may have made a difference. The first thing is this capacitor here. You can see I've added a note to use an electrolytic. The first time I did it, I used a ceramic 
Um, and then, you know, for the, for the fixed version, I had an electrolytic. Now, why might that make a difference? The effective series resistance on a ceramic capacitor is often much lower than it is on an electrolytic capacitor. So it's possible that the speech synthesizer, it just couldn't drive this audio output to the level it wanted to because of the components I had attached to it. I don't know that for sure. Um, and certainly I do have a resistor right there. So maybe I'm a little bit doubtful in this being the uh, culprit. But it's one of the things I changed. The second thing I changed was to add in this 10 ohm resistor here. I got this out of some of the schematics I found for the Hero Robots and some other projects. They had a 10 ohm resistor on the 12 volt supply coming into the speech board. You often don't really see something like that. I figure maybe it's there as some kind of a noise reduction thing, you know, use a resistor capacitor filter on the input perhaps. Uh, so my initial prototype didn't have it and I, I added it for the fixed version. Now the third thing I did was to fix a software bug. So I had a software bug where I wasn't reading this ACK line properly. And uh, what, what I was doing was because I wasn't getting the ACK, I wasn't releasing the strobe. So I was holding down the strobe for an extended period of time. Now, would that make a difference? I don't know if that makes a difference or not. You wouldn't think so, but, you know, maybe it did. Anyhow, those three things together, uh, changing out the capacitor, um, adding the 10 ohm resistor on the power coming in, and fixing the bug with the strobing, uh, one of those three things fixed whatever was wrong, and my speech chip stopped consuming excessive current, started making noise like it was supposed to, and stopped getting hot. Uh, so that's good news. The project was a success. Okay, here is the completed speech board. Let me get this out of the way. This is a small speaker that will listen to the audio. It is wired up to the TPA 2016 board, which is kind of piggybacked here on top of a header. Here is the Votrax SC01A speech synthesizer chip. Here's the Atmega 328 microcontroller. We've got the uh, boost converter here to go from 5 volt to 12 volt, as well as an external jack in case we wanted to power it off of an external supply. In that case, we'd remove the boost converter. So I have both the external jack and the boost converter just because when I was testing this out, I wanted to monitor the current draw and make sure I wasn't drawing too much current in that uh, rare speech chip. So once this is all done, we really don't need this jack anymore got the two protection diodes for a 5 volt and 12 volt. We've, over here we've got controls for the um, volume going into the amplifier. So the amplifier has its own volume, but uh, we've got a volume pot, kind of like a preamp control, and also the frequency control for the uh, speech chip. Transistor drivers for those two inflection pins that uh, needed higher than uh, logic level to drive them. Headers over here, this one here is a standard 6-pin um, Arduino programming header. This header over here is a 5-pin header and I've got my uh, plus, minus, and I squared C coming on that to go out to the robot. Let's go over and tell it to play Daisy and see if it sounds alright. Daisy, Daisy, tell me your answer to I F crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage. But you look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. Here we can see the speech board mounted inside the Hero Junior head. Um, this here is the breakout board where I have um, the stuff for the keyboard and LEDs and the Raspberry Pi down beneath it. And then right here is the speech board. So there are a total of four lines that wired up. The 5 volt ground um, SDA and SCL. Just like when we tried it out on the bench. There is a speaker mounted kind of underneath here. Pointed out the um, speaker slats on the side. And this uh, ribbon cable here is actually just uh, an Arduino programmer that's hooked up so that we can program it while I'm getting the software sorted out. So now let's go try it out on the robot. Okay, as usual, it's time for a quick demo using the handheld remote control. The robot can still 
drive around like usual and he can turn his head but now he can talk so this one hello, Leia. that's it hello Leia that's my daughter's name I am your first of robot I am a brain just like you do these were just some strings that were in the uh, software from the original Hero Jr. Intruder alert, intruder alert, you have five seconds to identify yourself. Then of course you can sing Daisy. Daisy, tell me your answer true. I am crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage, but you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. No oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesties above the fruit and plain. America, America, God shed his grace on me, and drunk I did with brotherhood from sea to shining sheep. Dad, what are you doing with the robot? I'm playing with the robot. Do you want to hear the robot sing a nursery rhyme? Yeah! Mary had a little and its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the land was sure to know. It followed Hello, robot. a day that was against the rules. It Hello! Children laugh and play to sing at school. Let's say hello, robot, again. Hello, robot. Hello. 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 Hello, robot. Hello, robot. Hello, robot. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.